brag about himself, but we are in the presence of greatness. And I know, hold on, because humbly, it's Christ in him. God from birth birthed him to be a warrior. Just like from birth, God has created you, and you're going to continue to tap into that and see why you were created. So without further ado, have fun with him. Even at the end, ask him questions. He's super relatable and friendly. He's the most <laughs> gentle man on the earth. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. I didn't have as much faith as I do now. There's a lot of things that have happened in my life. Now I understand why everything was, was happening to me. You can't choose your upbringing. Or you just get the cards that you're dealt with. I was a very quiet and shy kid, always trying to be helpful, nice. But I always try to be, oh, I'm tough. You know, nobody's, I'm always going to be tough, right? That's my sophomore year, little tiny guy. That's my senior picture over here. But I was a four sport letter winner. I played football, wrestled, basketball, and baseball. I wrestled the first two years because I was a smaller kind of guy, and then your senior year I started growing a little bit. I could dunk, so I was like, I'll play basketball. I'm sick of cutting weight. I don't know how you guys do it anymore. I hate it. Good thing. I can get my aggression out. Any sport, I can get my aggression out there. I've worked out a lot. That was something that kept my mind straight. There was a lot of kids out there doing drugs, drinking alcohol, but I knew there was something better. There's got to be something better than this. To get rid of all that anxiety, depression, and all that kind of stuff that was coming on top of it, it was real heavy. So I do crazy workouts. So I put a backpack on, wait in it, six miles down to my high school, work out in the gym, and run six miles back up. So I was testing myself. I always wanted to be ready. I went to many different schools, and then I got to Belvedere High School. The first day when I walked in with my lunch, I'm like, either I'm gonna have to fight somebody, I'm going to a new school, that's what I'm thinking, or I'm just gonna sit by myself, I'll be fine. And this group of young men said, hey, why don't you sit next to, next to us? So I sat next to them, and I was like, oh, here we go. Here comes the questions, here's what's gonna happen. And they said, hey, you play any sports? Yeah, that was the only thing that really kept me going through my life when I was younger. That brought me to a really good group of young men, you know, that were trying to do the right things in their life. A father figure to me was my coaches. I really looked up to them because I wanted to be perfect. I couldn't call them dad, but I, I really respected what they said because I had a different relationship with my coaches. They saw something different in me because I was a smaller kind of kid, but they saw my work ethic. I had a different personality where if they asked me to do something, I didn't go, yeah, right, come on, man. Really, again, do we see that sometimes? I never know. I was like, yes, sir, let's do it. Whatever I got to do. It's only going to hurt for so long, right? Or I'm going to be only tired for so long. Or you know, you're just going to make me run for this amount of time. It's going to end sometime, right? During those times, I wanted to know God. I wanted to know who he was. When I was little, I remember, you know, reading the stories. I was like, wow, these are amazing, amazing stories. But I just didn't get it. In my own way of praying, I would say, God, are you trying to put me through a trial? Are you trying to see how tough I can be? That's what you're doing, God. You're putting me through these trials in life. I'm going to show you I can do this. It's the same thing in my brain that I was thinking was wrong because I was trying to be perfect for my dad, for my coaches, for God. I'm trying to be perfect, and I could never be perfect. So here it comes, senior year. I'm getting looked at by all these scouts. I was like, I want to go to Western Michigan. I'll play D1 football. Those dreams got shattered. My mom got in a near-fatal car accident. So when I went to see that car, her face print was in the windshield. So she was bedridden for a year. Well, I'm not going to go to school now. I'm going to work. I'm going to take care of my family. Well, that was a year. So I went to Wyoming University. I was doing two-a-days with these guys, and I'm number 30 on the roster. At some point in your life, you might not have been the best. It was hard for me. I hadn't played any sports in over a year. 29 people in front of me for this number one spot. My mantra every single day when it only lasts for so long, it's going to end sometime. I was like, I got this. So I moved from 30th to the second position. I'm a freshman, right behind the senior. First game, he gets hurt, and I go in. I never played defensive back, though, in my life. I was a running back slash tight end. Wherever they needed me, I played every single position. So I started all four years at White University, but I got my degree. It's pretty awesome. I did that all on my own. Fourth game of my senior year, leading receiver in the league. Quarterback comes back, three-step drop. He's ready to throw, and he pumps it, and he threw it. I, I dove for it, caught it, landed like this and broke my collarbone in three big places. And I'm thinking to myself, really? This has to happen to me now? So I'm out for the season. I can come back for the last game, but I worked hard. I think everybody's come and had injuries. People say, well, you're not gonna make it, or you know, you don't, you don't feel good about yourself, right? You're saying, oh, I'm depressed. It was a lot of things you can do. I would work out my other arm, my legs, anything I could, because I wanted something different. I actually was asked to go to an NFL combine in Cleveland, Ohio in a, a national all-star game. So I only played four games, but I think that was the only games they saw. They're like, we want this kid to come. It was D3 all the way to Division One. I. I was a leading receiver. I had the best numbers for receivers, except for my track and field, my 40-yard dash. I ran a 4-5. I needed to run a 4-4. The bottom line is I wanted to prove that I could be something to my father, that I could be perfect, that I could be something in my life. I failed again. 
right? After college, you gotta get benefits and a job and start figuring that stuff out. I heard about this program in the military. If you go in for four years, they'll give you 65,000 towards your student loans. So the recruiter comes, I talk to him. What do you wanna do in your life? I was like, I wanna be the best. I still have to be perfect. I wanna be the best, I have something to prove to somebody. I was like, I want to be a ranger. The process is very difficult, you know, in special ops. Very elite. You're a professional athlete when you are a ranger or you're a Navy SEAL or any of those types of special ops type things. See that picture there? Not very happy, am I? And I know there's a little controversy here with my middle finger. It's kind of telling the story. You don't need your sleep. That's what keeps us going. We carry a lot of weight. We cover a lot of distance. A lot of airplanes. We fast rope out of helicopters. We don't hook up. Slide down a 90-foot rope like Spider-Man, hit the ground, and we're shooting. To get to that point, it's not easy, like I said, for most people. I say for most people, because it was easy for me. To come this ranger here, who's not very happy, who's in Afghanistan, in the middle of the mountains, the 20,000 feet peaks with snow, cold. This deployment, I had frostbite. My toenails turned black, they fell off. We would go into these little huts and everything, and I had fleas. The mountains are part of the Himalayas, so they're very treacherous. I was a forward observer and a shooter, so I controlled all aircraft, whether it be AC-130, F-16s, F-15s, helicopters. A-10s, I controlled mortars. I would usually deconflict three different assets at one time, which is crazy. I had three different radios talking to three different people, making sure that we're putting fires on the enemy. There was only one of me in the, in the platoon. There's antennas coming at you, they want to shoot at you. You know, when we hit the ground, we want to start, we want to hit, you know, hit the ground and start shooting. That's our job, right? Let's go, we're here to fight. You guys don't practice just to practice, right? You want to get in the game. So that's with us too. It's like NFL, we don't just want to play just to play, we want to go to the Super Bowl. You guys want to go to the national championship. So they trusted me. Trust is a big thing, having integrity and trust, right? They know exactly what you're going to do. If I can protect one more person, that's all I wanted to do in my life, is just keep protecting people. See these mountains here? We'd be up and down those mountains at night. When they knew that we fought at night, they called us the green monster because we had a little green light that would flash from our night vision. So they called us the green ghost, you know, trying to kill the green ghost. But it didn't have as much, you know, I did lose some of my friends on one mission trying to save a Navy SEAL. There's been plenty of books that are out there about them. Really good men that my wife has met. I had a 20 year reunion this past March. That you can trust the person next to you, that they're gonna do their job. Is that what you guys want with your, with your teams? Don't you want to trust that player that's right next to you? That, to me, it's huge. Like, if I do something and I give them the ball, I know that they're going to do the, exactly what they're supposed to do. Is he going to be where he's supposed to be? Can you trust that person with your life? Well, I know I can trust all of them with, with my life. So on top of this mountain here, we're on a mission, and it's cold, dark, nighttime. And I'm looking up, and I was angry. And I swore at God. I said, how did you do this to me? How can you do this to me? You know, I thought it was a trial when I was younger. I thought that I could prove to you that I could be something. You know, even though you put this family in my life, you know, I thought I persevered. You know, even though I didn't go to the school I wanted to go to, I thought I could persevere, and I did. I wanted to become a ranger, and I made it. I'm here fighting for everybody. Now you just kill three of my best friends. How can you do that? What kind of God are you to do that? I'm swearing, but I'm not saying it out loud, I'm screaming at the top of my lungs inside. And all that anger that I've had my whole life just was coming out. Chaplain Kirby, who carried a Bible, he didn't carry enough for it, um, came up to me. I said, you okay? I knew something was wrong. Because it was just recent that we lost our, our brothers. I said, I'm having a hard time. And he said, you're one of God's warriors. You're here to fight for him. This is the holy war, and you're fighting for him. And he goes, and it's not over yet. We're going to continue to fight this battle. It's going to be different when you get out. It's going to be a spiritual warfare, but it's going to be different. And you're going to excel at that as well. I didn't know what he said. This guy's talking to me. He doesn't carry a weapon. You know, he's got a Bible. Because I asked him one day, I said, where's your weapon? Where's your M4? This is my weapon. Schneider. He's got a Bible. What kind of guy is going to carry around a Bible as a weapon? Even though he said that to me, still angry, still hurt. But I went to a Christian counselor, and I didn't know he was a Christian counselor at the time. I needed help. I was depressed. I wanted to kill myself. You know, I had so much anxiety. All these different feelings were going on throughout my life anyway, but it just finally came to a hold, and I was like, I'm done with this. I don't want to do this anymore. Why me? Why are you choosing me to go through this? this I'm done with these trials. I'm done with this bull crap. So I met this gentleman, an older gentleman, sits me down, he's real soft and quiet. I'm not used to that, I'm used to it. let's go, you know, let's fight, let's go. He said, hey, listen, you know, I am a Christian um, counselor. We can talk about that if you want, but I'm not gonna push you into it. But I had questions, because I was angry. That gentleman helped me out a lot and actually made me understand that through my life, I wanted a father. I wanted my father to be a father. You didn't teach me how to shave, you teach me how to be a good young man. I looked at my coaches, I wanted them to be a father. They already have their families already. You're a coach, are you have a family? You're not my dad, right? <laughs> he already has a family. The Ranger Brotherhood, I'd go to any battle with those men. They're not my fathers. I was so angry at God throughout my whole life, I didn't understand it, but I didn't realize I always had a father. 
that he was always with me. He wasn't putting me through trials. He was actually carrying me through that stuff, making me the man that I am today. I thought that he abandoned me, but he never did. He was always there with me. I'm telling you from my experiences, but when you reach out to him, he's gonna be there for you. And you might not understand it, and it might not be when you want it to, because we want everything to happen now, don't we? You can pray about it, but you gotta be about it too. You gotta walk the walk, and we have to do our own thing too and fight hard. Meeting my wife, Robin, one of the most amazing things. I didn't know Robin. I knew her sister in high school, and she was a year older than me, and she was one of the three girls that passed away in a car accident in my high school. Robin also lost two brothers to addiction. So the stories that she tells and talks about online, they hit me hard. I was like, wow. For all the stuff that her family and she's going through in her life, she still loves the Lord, and is still trying to help people in this world. I didn't even think that I was gonna have a relationship with the Lord had a different plan, and he brought us together. It was an amazing Christian relationship. I love my wife for who she is. I love the way that she loves the Lord. I love that we were friends before anything, and I loved her for her. My heart goes out to all of you guys. You're all doing amazing things in your life. The Lord is inside of me, and I know the Lord's inside of all of you. He's just waiting for you to talk to him. You know, he's just gonna show you the path. He really is. But I wouldn't be the man I am today or done the, the things that I've done in my life without the Lord. You guys might not have the same experiences, or maybe you have. Somebody out there has had anxiety, depression, maybe even suicide. Things have gone wrong in their life, or somebody has passed away, and it's hard to, to deal with those things. But it's not that hard to reach out to the Lord. He's always there for you. just want to say thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. Were you one of the first in? Yes. I love yeah, actually, yeah. You're, so when I um, became a ranger, I did in September, Fifth, first Ranger Battalion, this is Spanish Georgia. Greatest, first bat's the best bat, just so you know. And uh, six days later, the 11th happened. And then once the second tower went down, we got the alert, get ready for wings up. Our leadership was amazing. The men I fought with, a lot of them are generals now, men underneath, presidents, great men that will do anything to protect you. But there's also, with that accountability, there's an intensity. It's really cool see leadership have that intensity. When I was in a leadership position, I had a lot of intensity. And a lot of my men will say I was really hard on them, which I was. But I had a different way of looking at things. So I think it's important for coaches or leadership to go back to those fundamentals. Uh, even watching film, you know, I should be here right now. Or being accountable and saying, why are you there? You trust each other. Hey, you should be there right now. Next time you gotta be there. Right? It doesn't mean you have to be angry at the person. Be accountable for each other, right? That's a brotherhood or sisterhood that you have. What scars were you saying that you said that weren't physical or more internal? I've gone through Humvees, exploding, different things like that. So like TBI, PTSD, that kind of stuff. You guys heard, I did, if I didn't talk to somebody or if I didn't have a good relationship with the Lord, you know, I'd be one of those 22 that, you know, kills yourself or commit suicide, right? So obviously yeah. being a Ranger or being a SEAL is like the ultimate team. When I was at Campbell, we used to have SEALs and Rangers come and talk to the team, which was super cool. They talked about, because they were part of the ultimate team, it was all about, you know, giving them all for their teammates when they stepped away from that. Um, it was really tough for them to kind of find a place in the world. And I know we have a bunch of athletes in here. Yeah. Uh, me going uh, through that uh, the past couple of months, like when they step away from that sport, when we step away from that sport, it can be really tough to kind of find what we should be doing, what our purpose is. So what yeah. were some of the things that uh, that you used to get you through that and to find That's purpose an again? Awesome question. That's an awesome question. It was very difficult for me. And the first thing you want to do is probably go to the bottle or do something, you know, like you, you know, people go to become alcoholics or do stuff like that because they don't know where to, to fill that, right? There was so much energy, there was so much excitement. I knew that my brothers were always going to be there with me. So when I stepped out of that, I had to move to Pennsylvania. What am I going to do? And I, my first job was a safety director at an electrical contractor. I'm like, this is boring, right? <laughs> this is hard. And I didn't have that brother. The coolest thing was that we were so close and tight and they lived all over the place and they were doing some really cool things around the world. But I can pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm going through a hard time. Hey, that's all right, where you at? And I can say, I'm here, right here in this building right now. They'd be, they'd be here within whatever, how many hours it took. They'd leave right now to come see me. You know, that's what the brotherhood is actually. I love the team atmosphere. You know, when I work now with my men, I'm always talking about team. We're so much stronger together. We are but we still need those good relationships when we get out of those things. What strategies did you use to stay disciplined in times where like your brothers weren't, just if they were slacking off or doing certain activities that you shouldn't be doing? Or... Lead by example, integrity. You do the right thing, even when no one's looking, 
is awesome. Leading by example is huge for me. I wouldn't ask any of my men to do anything that I wouldn't do first. And if you can prove that to somebody, that you're gonna go into that hornet's nest first, they're gonna follow you anywhere. Anybody else? Like, know the reason why God like took away your brothers at that point? Yeah. But do you know, like, that at this point? Yeah, actually, Chaplain Kirby, that gentleman you saw on the, on the picture there, see that cross? That was the first time we were overseas. It was kind of crazy, but he put that cross there, right over top of this, like an old building, and it was where we worked out. He put this cross up and said, hey, if you guys ever want to come down and have church, I'm gonna have it this night. All right, come on, I'm here to work out and you know, kill the enemy. I'm not here to have church. And he kept doing it all the time. He just kept saying, I'm gonna have church this night. One time I was like, come on guys, let's just go down there, make them happy. And it was very poignant. It was um, pretty awesome. It hit me deep, just what he was talking about. The three men that passed a week later gave themselves to the Lord at night. It, it was amazing to me that I know that um, they didn't die in vain and that they died to protect all of you.